So welcome to Wellington and Wetley Rocks. We're here at the beginning of Lent. And Lent starts with Ash Wednesday, that day when we might get a sign of the cross on our foreheads in ashes. Now, that's uh, an ancient symbol. And the idea of ashes has been associated with repentance for sins for you know, thousands of years, really. My favourite prophet in the Old Testament is probably Jonah. And you know the, the fishy story about how he gets uh, spat out of a big fish or a whale. They didn't know any difference in those days. And he goes to preach in the city of Nineveh. And the people there actually listen to him, which is very unusual for an Old Testament prophet, but they do. They sit up and listen and go, OK, we're doing something wrong. Right, we better start doing it right. And as a sign of the repentance from the king down, everyone is in sackcloth and ashes. It's a symbol of repentance. It has been for, well, that's thousands of years ago. And Jesus talks about cities who he says, well, they should have repented in ashes and sackcloth as well, but they didn't. So ashes, and especially this sign of the cross, can be um, a symbol for other people to see. But it's also something for us. It reminds us of our mortality, which we don't particularly like to be reminded of. But that's part of what Lent's about. It's the hard things of Christianity. Early on in the Bible, there's a conversation between Abraham and God. And Abraham's asking God, he's giving him a request. Uh, and Abraham says, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, so that's how he sees himself. And actually, that's pretty much how we should see ourselves. We are dust and ashes. Had more funerals this year than ever, I think. Had a burial of ashes just the other day. So it was a bit of a shock to see a person, but it's not a person, it's just a pile of ashes. And we think, well, how can a person now be a pile of ashes? Someone we've loved and spent years with, and now all that's left is a pile of ashes. But of course, that's not it. That's not what we believe as Christians. We believe there is something more to it than that. That person lives on, and not just in our members, but in some other way too. A person is more than a physical body. We talk about a soul too. And, well, a soul is a person. And a person is more than a physical body. A soul is what makes us us. If you want to be scientific about it, maybe it's an information pattern. It's not just atoms, but it's the arrangement of those atoms that can continue afterwards. On a much more fundamental level than that too. Information doesn't die in the same way that matter does. I tried to explain to the school children just this week about repentance and what it means. We are called to repentance, but it's not that avoiding sin and being good leads to God loving us more. It's that loving God more leads us to avoiding sin and being good. It's always that way around. So Lent is a pretty miserable time, but it's there to remind us that we are but dust. We are dust and ashes, and yet in God, we're more than that. That's why materialism doesn't really work. The idea that everything is just reducible to atoms and fundamental particles. There's more to it than that. It's how everything's put together. And we, as people, are, as far as we know, the pinnacle of God's creation in this world. So this time of Easter is a time of our mortality. But it's also looking forward. Lent is a reminder that we are dust and ashes, but Easter Day and Jesus' resurrection points us to something much beyond that, where God recreates us in his kingdom. And so let's pray. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that ashes as a sign for us, maybe symbols of penitence. A reminder of our mortality 
but that by the grace of God, we know that there is resurrection in Jesus. Amen. Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 4. And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It's also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him up to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I'll give you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan. It's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him.